how important is the food that we're eating in the first two to four or five years of life and what does that set us up for down the road? You know, Scott, it sets the stage for a whole host of either good health or poor health. Uh, I'm blessed because I have five children ages four to 34. And, um, you know, as we develop with more science and knowledge, the four-year-old's got the benefit of what I learned <laughs> before the 34-year-old. But I have to say the 34-year-old, I remember uh, my wife was breastfeeding at the time and the baby was getting colicky and, and having problems and having trouble sleeping. And I said, you know, I think it's the milk you're drinking that's somehow getting mm. through the breast milk into the baby and affecting the baby. And she looked at me and says, that's strange and didn't believe me. So I took her to Dr. Paul Fleiss. He's a renowned uh, researcher, MD. Uh, he, he's a pediatrician from USC, UCLA. I mean, he's you know, really well trained. And, and now I think he's approaching his 80s, you know. Mm. And uh, he examined the baby, went through all the tests, my 34-year-old son, and now that was 34 years ago. And he said, he, he turned to her and he said, I think you're aller he's allergic to milk. You have to stop uh, drinking milk and maybe let's see what happens. Sure enough, she gave up the milk. The, the colic went away. Uh, the baby could sleep through the night. And that was my first introduction to prove that babies are so sensitive when they're so young and their digest tract is sensitive to leaky gut syndrome or certain proteins that are too complex for the human body. And even as we get older, oftentimes these proteins are too complex. Uh, my four-year-old has the opportunity because I started him off after two years of breastfeeding uh, with his mom. We, we introduced uh, coconut water and then we gradually introduced uh, bananas and some natural fruit and things. And so uh, his doctor, um, Dr. Karchanel, says that uh, he's got to be one of the most fortunate babies because we have a perfect diet for him, you know, during, and the times he deviates, you know, he's at a little school function. Mm -hmm something you see the differences in his behavior or you notice something comes up within you know his, mm -hmm. his uh, health and physiology and, and, and cold uh, colds and, and flus and and things so uh, oftentimes I think we've overlooked uh, the importance for childhood nutrition and how that sets the stage for a future of either optimum health or poor health but we can still adjust even if you know our moms didn't know everything we know um, and, and and they didn't breastfeed and they, they introduce some of these foods too soon we can go back and, and kind of make the most basic type of diet to make it compatible so that this person can have some relief, less inflammation, uh, better health, better mental function and clarity, and overall uh, prevent uh, cardiovascular disease, reduce the incidence of diabetes, uh, arthritis, heart disease. These, these things we now know about. Dr. Dean Ornish at this convention is talking about mm -hmm. reversing atherosclerosis with the very same diet that I, I've been using for 35 years. Uh, many of these are offshoots of Nathan Pritikin and his original re research which, by the way, he's been vindicated. Uh, Medicare recently approved his uh, course uh, lectures uh, for the treatment of diabetes. We had an early study back in the 1980s of over 4,000 patients with diabetes. And to this day, nothing's been matched to prove so well and conclusively that oils and fats is one of the principal factors that desensitizes insulin. Milk compounds the problem. Um, but we realized that um, it wasn't just sugar alone that caused diabetes. There's far more to it.